going to discuss is Veres needle. Veres needle was invented by one physician, his name was Veres. So, his idea was that there should be some instrument which can be introduced into the chest for pleural aspiration. So, that there will be a blunt tip. So, that after going into the space where the fluid is accumulated, the blunt tip will come in front and it will not damage the lung. That is how he has invented it. Various needles are available in four sizes that is 8 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter and 20 centimeter. 8 centimeter various needle is used for junior pediatric patients like less than 5 year age group you will use 8 centimeter. 10 centimeter and 12 centimeter is used for adult and 20 centimeter is used for senior pediatric patients. 20 centimeter is used for bariatric patient <laughs> that is for for obese, obese patients for morbid obesity you will use 20 centimeter. So, 8, 10, 12 and 20. Now, various needle 10 and 12 for adults if little overweight patient you will use 12 normal patient you will use 10 20 for bariatric. Now, various needle every instrument you have to learn five important property. One is name of different part of the instrument, second is uses of that instrument, third you have to learn complication that instrument can do, fourth you have to learn what is the alternative of that instrument. Suppose, I do not have it then what I can do alternative and fifth how to clean and sterilize. This is this information is required for every instrument what we have. So, various needle uh, has two part one is needle other is a stylet. This is the needle and this is a stylet. A stylet has one eye at the tip, but this eye is not on the tip it is on the side, the eye is on the side and tip is blunt, tip is blunt. It has one spring here and one <coughs> valve. This lock if it is parallel to the stylet that means it is open, if it is at right angle that means it is closed. During introduction of the various needle this knob should be open or closed open. So, that if you enter into any vessel immediately you will learn that I am in wrong place. Now, you have to hold it like a dart this is the way to hold it and that much portion should be naked it should be naked and how much you will use it depends upon the thickness of abdominal wall. So, by the side of umbilicus you should hold it like that. This is umbilicus and this is suppose this is the patient I am holding. So, it is that much thick. If it is that much thick you have to add further 4, 4 centimeters. So, this is and further 4 I have to hold it like this. Why? When you put the various needle it is tenting and then it punctures and here it is tenting and then it punctures. So, this is changing 4 centimeter and 4 centimeter. So, suppose patient is morbid obese and if you hold it like that it this self is 8 centimeter or 10 centimeter and 10 plus 4 14 and at least 4 5 centimeter is required to hold your 3, three finger. That is why in morbid obese patient you are using 20 centimeter. Suppose this is pediatric patient and that much thin then I have to hold it here if I am using in very thin patient. So, how much you will keep the tip of the needle free this depends upon the thickness of the abdominal wall 4 centimeter plus thickness of the abdominal wall and then you will hold like a dart dart is a game which is used to throw. If you have to aim you are using dart and dart always they, they hold it like a pencil this way. If you will hold like that you cannot throw it you cannot get a aim. 
holding like a dart has one more advantage that your elevation angle will be 45 degree. During introduction of the various needle, always tip of the various needle should be pointed towards the anus. And it is this way you are pointing towards the anus. Towards the anus of the patient. If you are pointing towards the anus, you have many advantages. One advantage never ever in your life you will damage the aorta or vena cava. Because aortoiliac axis is approximately 5 cm above the sacral pementary. So, just 5 cm above aorta is bifurcated into common iliac vessels. So, there is no point I can damage the aorta or vena cava if I am pointing towards the anus. Second advantage is if you are pointing towards the anus, you are going to the hollow sacral curve and that area does not have the vertebral body. In the lumbar or thoracic vertebra, there is a vertebral body which is giving counter from below like this how it is elevated. But in the sacrum, the body of vertebra is in the same plane of transverse process. So, it is not elevated up and it is curve, hollow sacral curve. So, it does not give you counter from below, even if the very little goes, it can be dimpled in. Third advantage is if you are going towards the anus, your vertical entry is 50 percent and your horizontal entry is 50 percent. Like this is called as vertical entry and this is called as horizontal entry. If you go perpendicular, your vertical entry is 100 percent, horizontal entry is 0. But if you go 45 degree angle, then your horizontal entry is 50 percent and vertical entry, horizontal shift is 50 percent, vertical shift is 50 percent. So, you will not touch the bobbin. If you go completely perpendicular, your 100 percent is the vertical entry. So, you are going more deeper. Am I clear? So, these are the point you should point towards the anus, but there is a problem. If you are going the oblique, then 45 degree angle, this angle is 45 degree, then your vertical depth of entry is less short because half of the length is occupied in the horizontal shift, is not it? So, that is why you are more away from the bowel and that will prevent the injury of the bowel, but going towards the anus has a big problem. Problem is there is a fair chance that you will go to preperitoneum, because going oblique your tip of the variation will slip over the peritoneum, see it is sliding. And if it is sliding like that, you will go somewhere in the preperitoneum and you will insufflate the gas there, is not it? If it is pricked, it is you are lucky it is pricked, otherwise it is preperitoneum. And then a huge preperitoneal pocket will form, your trocar also will go, your telescope also will go. And with the telescope you will see fibrous trabeculae just like a spider web, no bowel is visible. That happens for the beginners, all of you might have gone couple of time to the preperitoneal space, because we are hesitant especially the beginners and you are going oblique. So, you go to the this is a big problem. So, what to do? If I am going oblique, I am going to the preperitoneum. If I am going perpendicular, I am risk in risk. So, what to do? The better way is to you should go oblique as well as perpendicular both. So, what to do? You lift the abdominal wall in such a way that angle between the various needle and abdominal wall is 90 degree, but angle between the various needle and the body of the patient is 45 degree. So, your both the problems are solved. So, you should lift the abdominal wall a lot. If you cannot lift your own, you should ask the assistant for help. So, if you will lift it like that, then it is perpendicular but it is oblique also, oblique in relation to the body of the patient and perpendicular in relation to the abdominal wall of the patient. So, it will neither go to the preperitoneum nor it will touch the aorta or vena cava. That is why your anesthetist should give the maximum amount of muscle relaxant 
during the introduction of various needle or trocar. Sometime our anesthetists they do not do so, they keep the patient light because they think that right now surgery is not fully started, once the patient will go in the deep surgery then I will make it little deep, but this is actually wrong. In laparoscopy maximum relaxation is required during the entry of the various needle and trocar and that should must be carefully done. Sorry, I missed some point. Muscle relaxation. Sensation point where? Pardon? Puncture or site where? Puncture I am not discussing the site. Site why I am not discussing? That there are five site of access. One is supra umbilical, infra umbilical, superior crease, inferior crease and trans umbilical. Puncture site and palmer's point. Puncture site I will not discuss because right now I am discussing only instrument. So puncture site I will discuss during a separate presentation what we have that is called as access technique ok. At that time I will yes, what is so your question? Whatever the site it should be 45 degrees with the No, only in the umbilicus. Yes, if it is palmer's point it should be perpendicular to the abdominal wall because palmer's point you are correct if you are if you point towards the anus it will damage the splenic flexor of colon is not it. You means that you are going backward. Pardon? It means you are going backward. No, you are not going backward. Do you know why? Because you have lifted the abdominal wall. So, actually in relation to the abdominal wall you are perpendic perpendicular and as soon as you leave it you are perpendicular. But now it is not towards the No, no. You know as a reference point it will be changed backward. Yes, that is why during only during the introduction you will lift the <laughs> abdominal wall so that the various needle is pointing towards the anus, but in relation to the abdominal wall it is perpendicular. Am I clear? Oh, yes, well, tell me again no problem. Yes, practically I will show you, practically I will show actually we have already a lecture for that access technique in this video also I will show you and all of you tomorrow morning you have to practice it also. From tomorrow the schedule will change actually, from tomorrow two batches will be there. One batch will start at 9.30 and uh, 9.30 to 12.30 you will have 9.30 to 12, 9.30 to 12 you have practical every day and 12 to 1.30 there will be one lecture, 1.30 to 3 again 2 to 3 o'clock there will be second lecture and the second batch will start from 12 o'clock and from 12 to 3 o'clock they will attend the lecture same way and from 3 to 5 30 they will have every day 5 30 or sometime if the lecture is little delayed you can do up to 6 o'clock every day there will be practical. So, the first batch will come at 9 30 and they will be free around 3 o'clock and second batch will come at 12 o'clock and they will be free at 6 o'clock, is it ok? So, this is the schedule from tomorrow. So, tomorrow morning the first session will be access technique, where you, all these dummies has the abdominal wall and we will give you Ellis forceps, we will give you various needle and you have to do suction irrigation hanging drop test yourself and you will introduce the various needle and trocar. So, the idea is that up to the relation of the abdominal wall it should be 90 degree and then it should be backward, backward means? Yes. Yes. No, no, I am, I am, I am saying the anal opening, yes, I am, I am not giving you the, my, my purpose is that our wherever the anus opening is there, it should be pointed, means if you do not consider the anus, at least consider this as a 45 degree, that is all, you know, because you are saying that anus is going backward, that is you true, but we are not take, talking about the passage of whole of the anus. I am talking about the anal opening, means wherever we feel in the brain that where the anus is there. The idea is that you should escape the sacral pomentary, you should not go perpendicular, you should escape the aorta, 
you should not go towards the vena cava and aorta you got my point so this thickness according to the thickness of the abdominal wall yes 45 degree become 60 and then 90 and no. the obesity increases you, you know what happens sometime with the there are three exception of oblique entry one is morbid obese patient other is any lower midline incision and third is diagnostic laparoscopy under local anesthesia suppose patient is morbid obese BMI 40 and all, then you do not have to go oblique, you should must go perpendicular that you have told because if morbid obese patient if you will go oblique you will be lost somewhere in the fat pad pre peritoneum and in morbid obese patient we go trans umbilical if you are a gynecologist and if you are a surgeon sometime in morbid obese patient you have to go supra umbilical. Do you know why with the morbid obesity umbilicus displaced down like sometimes if the patient is super morbid obese like WWF sumo and all their umbilicus is up to the level of a scrotum because it displays so much down you see they are holding with a cloth they are supporting their um, abdominal wall. So, for those patient you may have to go supra umbilical that is why in the bariatric surgery we do not consider umbilicus as a point of relevance we consider from GP sternum from GP sternum your port should be 20 centimeter below. And it depends now where it is, it may be 5 centimeter above the umbilicus, may be 10 centimeter above the umbilicus, depending upon how much umbilicus is displaced. So, that is why we consider from GF sternum 20 centimeter below, but in those obese patient you will never go oblique, oblique you can go only when you are going around the umbilicus, otherwise in the palmer's point you will never go oblique, in supra umbilical you will never go oblique, is not it, but 90 percent of the surgery is done going through the umbilicus. Umbilicus is the most attractive site for the primary trocar insertion. Reason being it is central location making the access of all the quadrant of the abdominal cavity easy because central location. You can go right iliac fossa, left iliac fossa, upper hypochondrium everywhere central location can give you the access of all the quadrant. Second advantage is it is the thinnest part of the abdominal wall because at the level of the umbilicus inferior and uh, anterior and posterior rectus is fused together which is making it thinner. Third advantage is it has a cell intelligence there is a vitlo intestinal duct that has a cell intelligence of a spontaneous closure. Do you know umbilicus is always open in the Unit. yes after birth or in the fetus, but just after birth uh, spontaneously it is closing is not it because of vitlo intestinal tract which has a cell intelligence that shrink its own. So, due to that we are talking about here umbilical entry. The other entry is exceptional entry that I will discuss later. So, this should be perpendicular and idea of going backward means idea is going towards the anus and so that we should escape the great vessels and after that once the pneumoperitoneum is created and once abdominal wall is distended automatically it become perfect. It is not like that if you are doing college cystectomy then you cannot put towards the anus because once the abdomen is distended it will again become corrected and then trocar will show you up there is no problem in that. So, this was the how the various needle we should hold. Now, second is as soon as it is in you should do the irrigation suction and hanging drop test this is irrigation test it should go free flow then you suck when you suck nothing should come same fluid which you have irrigated if it is coming back that means we are in the closed space pre peritoneum may be rectus may be subcutaneous and if more fluid which you have irrigated is coming back that means patient either has ascites or patient we are in the bladder urinary bladder was distended if red is coming in the vessel, if the yellow is coming in the bowel, then you should do hanging drop test. You should put few drop of saline and you will see a hanging drop here. This is hanging drop and then lift the abdominal wall, it will be sucked in because after lifting the abdominal wall, negative pressure of the abdominal cavity increases. Normally also there is a minus 2 <coughs> to minus 4 millimeter of mercury negative pressure inside the abdomen. But if you lift it, it will be shucking it. If sometime if this drop is confused, you are confused that it is positive or negative, then you can do plunger test. 
in plunger test the piston is taken out here and then you will see this column will be sucked in can you see it is dropping slowly and this column of the water is sucked in if it is negative pressure it is sucked very fast if you are in pre pendulum it will not be sucked it will be here only because a positive pressure is formed due to the fluid there and then it will stop further going the plunger test this is called as it is empty now and these tests are used for the plunger plunger test p l u n d g e r now these are the test after that you will start the pneumoperitoneum and once the pneumoperitoneum is started then there is one more test which is called as quadro manometric test quadro means four manometric means pressure test quadro manometric yes irrigation uh, test uh, suction uh, test uh, hanging drop uh, test uh, hanging uh, drop uh, test uh, also uh, can be replaced by plunger uh, test and then quadro manometric indicator quadro manometric indicator i can uh, demonstrate you during the insufflated presentation so uh, that i will separately discuss for how the quadro manometric indicators so what we get to know from the first irrigation you know irrigation test has two advantage one advantage that you know always the eye of the varus needle is on the side so during introduction once the this blunt tip this is blunt this is not sharp so during introduction once blunt comes in out in out then the eye of the varus needle sometime going there like this see it will catch some of the soft tissue or fat so once you irrigate it it get flushed out and second the irrigated fluid should not disappear if irrigated fluid we could not take it back that means we are inside the abdominal cavity if the irrigated fluid is coming back that means we are in the closed cavity we are not in the abdomen. that's why irrigation is important isn't it and in the suction if the blood is coming that was is vessel if it is yellow is coming that means in bowel and if it is fluid or a straw color is coming that means either ascites tuberculosis or in the bladder sometime blood comes if there is rupture ectopic suppose and there is a hemoperitoneum hemoperitoneum then blood also can come but at that point we know that blood has to come because it is already we know by ultrasound that 1 liter blood is inside the abdomen so this is how you have to do suction irrigation hanging drop now the next question is what are the uses of the varus needle first use is very obvious that is pneumoperitoneum second use may be sometime huge ovarian cyst is there if you want to aspirate you can go percutaneously you can aspirate it or maybe some uh, dermoids yes in college yes in college cystectomy sometime if you want you can use it but basically we use aspiration needle there is a separate needle for that this is aspiration needle uh, here yes that one and it is better for cholecystectomy isn't it here this is aspiration needle that will go but if you want you can use it yes the, you can use that also but this is aspiration needle and here you will attach the suction and directly but if you want you can use it you are absolutely correct now other use very good use is it is a very fantastic port closure instrument it can be used for port closure how you have to open it and remove the stylet and put a one suture into the varus needle this is a varus needle you take any suture you can use nylon you can use uh, cat gut you can use pds and introduce one suture and after introducing the suture here the suture is introduced can you see that this is suture and then tie a knot just tie a knot here knot is tightened and then hide it it is hidden and it is now made after that what you do you take other suture any suture by creel silk uh, pds whatever you want and put inside this tip only 2 cm and then bend it it is bended now hold it like a dart and suppose this is a port go by the side of the port leaving the skin don't hold the skin and rest of the layer you will puncture and you are in under vision 
all the pore closure is done under vision. And then you put the finger over the longer thread and pull the smaller thread out. Here you are out, but uh, still the tip is in. Now you go from other side and pull it. As soon as you pull, a loop is formed. Can you see a loop? There is a loop. And then just entangle this suture and pull this suture out and it is out and then tie the knot it is done see here and then you tie both and it is tightened port is closed close the rectus and muscle and every layer together at the end of the surgery yes port closure yes instead of the suture passer or endo there is another way this is also used for two port cholecystectomy, two port appendicectomy or ventral hernia surgery to fix the transfacial fixation of the mesh in the ventral hernia. We use it for transfacial fixation. So, this is I will demonstrate you later also. If you put in the YouTube various needle port closure, then you will see my videos there also. But right now, I will just demonstrate you how to do. Again, I will show you once more. You make a loop first like that and then put one suture and put the 2 centimeter of this suture only 2 centimeter inside this eye like that. That is all and then hold it this way and a, even if the cannula is there, cannula dal do usme, trocar dal do usme, wahi abdominal wal de do, yellow hai wo dikhai dega. Even trocar also. Even if the trocar is there, you can close it. Go by the side and then introduce it in. And once it is in, then put the finger over the longer thread and then pull this out. And it is out. But this thread is already in. Then you go from other side and then you go in. And as soon as you pull it, see. Can you see a loop is forming and the just entangle this suture in the loop and it is done. As soon as it will entangle, sometime you may take it out also, cannula, cannula you can take it out and as soon as you entangle, it will take it out. See here, this is suture itself is pulling the suture and this suture is out, both the ends are out and then you can tie the knot, you can tie the knot. Do you know this is very simple? It is done by the cobblers also, shoemakers. Mm -hmm. When they suture the. Yes, endo clinch has the advantage that you have to buy this. Like you have a different type of suture passer. That is cobbler's needle, endo clinch, suture passer. They are different names which you can use. Suture passers are a small instrument which you can use for port closure, but various needle also can be used if you do not have any sophisticated instrument. This is suture passer. Suture passer has only one drawback. If you are holding it, sometimes the jaw remain open and while pushing it in, it breaks. In the Google, if you will type the suture passer and broken suture passer, there are 20 articles published which has been demonstrated that it breaks the suture passer while introducing it. But here, it is impossible to break. Sometime it is used for the this is suture passer. Suture passer there is one a small eye. Can you see that? But there is a problem. Sometime what happens <coughs> that when you are holding this suture in this small eye like that, and if accidentally you will hold it by the base, accidentally if you will hold it by the base here, like that, then it remains open. Can you see that? Here. If you will hold like this, this is open, even I am not holding it open and then if you will try to go grow, it will break because it is entangled into the tissue. So, this is a risky instrument which sometimes is dangerous. So, the suture should must come into the eye and this suture passer is used to push it in and then pulling it out, it is already broken already <coughs> and then you will push it in. And after going it in, leave the suture and then come out and go from other side and again catch this and pull it. This is suture passer. 
but uh, if you do not have you can use varicetinib. It is also used for appendicectomy like suppose you have the sponge lana this is appendix and suppose you have you want to do two port appendicectomy you do not want third port you, not lap assisted in lap assisted you have to take appendix out but here one two port then what you do this is abdominal wall in this abdominal wall put the various needle and then you go with one of the grasper and catch the appendix here this way and then rotate the various needle as soon as you will rotate the various needle it will hold the appendix you will see within few seconds it will start holding the appendix because once it will rotate a knot will form hmm. or, or press karo thoda sa. very good hmm. Chordo. and then once this will go then it will act as a traction see here and then suture itself is giving traction and then with other grasper or harmonic you can dissect the major appendix and you can separate it ok. So, this way it can be used for other purposes also for, for various needle it is very simple just you have a same loop this is a loop just you go through the abdominal wall and pull the various needle a loop is formed then through this loop a grasper will go and it will catch the tip of the appendix and then uh, yes and then outside it will be rotated once you rotate automatically just how a wrinkle will form here and that will hold the appendix see it is holding the appendix and then appendix is stretched like that and level of stretch you can adjust by pulling the suture out or in and then you can dissect the major appendix by the harmonic and then you can tie one extra corporeal knot and then you can cut the appendix. So, how to do we will learn later once I will discuss the appendicectomy then I will demonstrate you many way of doing appendicectomy and this is also one of the way and do you know this puncture of the needle will not leave any scar and it is not a port because it is going percutaneously. So, there is no any port required needle, needle will require only the 1 millimeter prick of the skin with the 11 number knife that is all just at the end you have to put some new aspirin powder and a scab will form no any stitch is required no any handy plast also is not required a steady strip is also not required a scab will form which will dry within few seconds is not it. So, these are the purposes of the virus now next question how to yes. Disposable virus, one virus needle you have to break. So, any old virus needle you can break and you can remove the stylet out, then you can use it because stylet is not used in this purpose, only the needle part is used. Now, the next question is how to clean and sterilize? Laparoscopic instruments are basically <coughs> never sterilized unless until you use the disposable one. Laparoscopic instruments can only be disinfected, high level of disinfection you can do. If you want to disinfect it, you have the many options. One is glutaldehyde, glutaldehyde is 2 percent glutaldehyde which is used. The trade name is Cydex, Cydex is very popular, but many names are there like glutaral, glutahide. In India, many companies are making this is activator, this is activator. So, you have to mix with this and as soon as you mix it is now start countdown starts and it can be used for 15 day or 15 time whatever comes earlier is quotado. There is one side x tray in that tray you have to keep this instrument for 6 to 8 hour if you want to sterilize and uh, here you have to write the activation date and expiry date it can be used once activation then it can be used 15 times or 15 days, whatever comes earlier. Like in 3 days, you have to clean surgery, then you have to throw it out after 3 days. In 15 days, there was no surgery, then also 16th day you cannot use the activator. This is now expired. Inside, there is another tray, that is a perforated tray inside. Excuse me, sir, if you have 
कार्सिनोजेनिक especially for the nurses who are not wearing the gloves and repeatedly the glutel dehyde is touching the skin few cases of the skin cancer has been reported so nowadays we are using the new generation chemicals these are the biguanides para aphthaldehyde solution so it has advantage that you can use same way 15 day or 15 time same way but it doesn't have any carcinogenic this is this is many names are there this particular name is medis medis is a trade name from elderly pharmaceutical the ethicon is making selling it by the name of rapicidex rapicidex and be, yes principle is it contains the biguanides biguanides and para aphthaldehyde this is not a single chemical it is a compound so it has advantage that within 30 minutes it is sporicidal also if you then the bactericidal 10 minutes it is written here that immuno compromised tuberculosidal 30 minutes and hiv 30 minutes and spore also 30 minutes isn't it so even the spore can be killed within 30 minutes These solutions. The cost is more. In the gluten dehyde, it will cost you approximately 500 rupees for 5 liter. But this one you have to mix with the 450 cc of the 4,500 cc of saline, and then it will be activated. And the cost of this one is approximately 2,500 rupees. So it is approximately five times expensive. But it is safe and quick. especially for a high volume hospital where in one day you have five six surgery you don't have that much six hour time to give contact time and you may not have go many sets of instrument if you have four five sets of instrument then it is okay one instrument in one other other but if you have only single set of instrument you should use the biguanide solution you should not use chilet for set to lift the laparoscopic instrument otherwise insulation will break And then you are in trouble because it can create the burn to the intestine, insulation failure. So always gloves, hand will be used to lift. If you don't want to waste five liter further saline to wash it out, sometimes what we do that eight line instrument, you know, nurse can hold like that, and with one single five hundred ml saline bottle, they just drip it out and rinse it out, and then you can keep on the instrument for. You do not want to. Yes, but ideally, there should be two side extract in one saline, in another glutel dehyde. Then lift it and rinse it in the other side extract, and then you put it. so that outside glutel dehyde should be completely washed. <coughs> Although if little is attached, nothing happens. So this is regarding the uh, sterilization process. Another way is you can use uh, formalin chamber. Once the instruments are sterilized, then suppose your surgery is cancelled. Or your surgery is next day. Then you can use formalin chamber. This formalin chamber outside you will not touch. She will touch. This, this I am not supposed to hold because my hand is gloves. And inside she will not touch. Your gloves hand should touch. And then telescope, the cables, the hysteroscopes, and then the different type of electrodes, camera head. All you can put in the side X-ray. And the sorry, glutel dehyde. This is formalin chamber, and these are the formalin tablets. These tablets, six tablets you have to put in a moist ball piece, and you it is only active till it is tablet form. Right now it is tablet. Once it is become powdered, that means it is expired. You have to use another. 
how frequently you have to change it depending upon how frequently you are opening it. Also depend upon the temperature, ambient temperature. If it is winter, the tablets last for two weeks also. But if it is summer and your OT is not fully air conditioned, then it may be within two, three days and frequently you are opening, then tablet become powder. Tablet comes like this and then you will take it out and inside these are the formalin tablets. So this is also one of the way formalin tablets should be ideally used to keep the instrument sterilized. It should not be used for primary disinfection. But at some places they use it for primary disinfection. If you are using it for primary disinfection, at least overnight it has to be saved. Like in the evening, if you will clean the instrument with the alcohol, with the spirit outside, first you clean with the rinsing water with the detergent, then clean with the alcohol, then dry it, and then put it in the formalin chamber in the evening today, so that tomorrow morning you can perform the surgery. And in spite of not using the neutral diet, some people directly use formalin chamber. Ideally, Forming chamber is used for keeping the instrument sterilized or carrying it from one place to another place. Like if you are a freelancer performing surgery in two, three operation theatres, in two, three hospitals, and you want to carry your own instrument, then for that forming chamber is useful. Other way of uh, disinfection is the green oxide chamber. The green oxide chambers are little expensive, but 55 degrees centigrade for half an hour you can use your instrument is nicely established. Another way is gamma chamber. Gamma chambers are only available in very sophisticated high-end hospitals. Generally, we don't prefer gamma chamber. And in India, we don't use gamma chamber for the, these instruments because cost will be so high. 40 lakh rupees is the cost of the chamber itself. Cost will be so high that if that much money if you will use, then better if you use this program. Disposables are cheaper because if you will see the interest of that much money for two languages, then you can use the disposable and you can charge the percent also. That's why disposable, but disposable if you are using only if you are rich. If you are rich, you use disposable. If you are poor, then you should use reusable. But if you are using disposable as a reusable, that means you are very poor. <laughs> disposable should never ever be reused. Because disposables are made for single use. We have seen that many people they buy disposable and they don't throw it till it works. Either chopa and tabula or instrument, that is dangerous. Because disposable cannot be dismantled. And these are not those are instruments not made for dis disinfection. Because you cannot clean them. You cannot dismantle and clean them. So the blood, the pus cell, all is inside the disposable. So it should never be reused, it is risky. It is strictly written, but not for second use. Just like the ring. This ring you will never reuse. Now, next instrument I am going to discuss is propagation. Doctor, you have said that with this material you are disinfected the instrument, not sterilized. So, the bi-gonet. You know, in the bottle itself it is written high level disinfectant. It is not a standard. Sterilization word means each and every microorganism is infected. Do you know? No, sterilized word we use. That is a misnomer. All these are disinfectant. If you will see on the bottle itself, it is written high level disinfectant. They written there, company they themselves they know. Do you know why? Sterilization you have to use autoclaving. Autoclaving is possible with these instruments. But the problem is each instrument should be separately wrapped. Because if the instrument will hit like that, it will break the insulation. And if you will keep every instrument together in autoclaving, and then you heat it at 130 degrees centigrade at 22 Pascal pressure, then if it will touch one instrument or another insulation will Each and every instrument has to be wrapped with a separate polythene pack which comes. It's a polythene pack of an instrument. I will show you and then you can autoclave. But or if you autoclave it is sterilized. But if you are thinking that I am using only chemical and sterilization means it is guaranteed. 
which is done. Do you know why? If you are putting in the Sajak spray, uh, suppose little bit that much is also out, then that portion is not a seller. And it can make the other parts infected. That's the reason nowadays a spore producing organic infection is increasing in number. Especially a typical mycobacterial infection. Do you know why? Because in high volume operation theater, and especially in the operation theater, we have the same theater they share for open surgery as well as laparoscopy. Same theater they share. So suppose they did one laparotomy, they did one delivery in the same OT, they did wound uh, bird infection and sting grafting in same OT. And then now the instruments <coughs> are kept there. And then you are not giving proper sporicidal 6 to 8 hour contact time. And suppose you did the appendicectomy in 1% and that patient has a tuberculosis, intestinal cox abdomen and then the same instrument you put in the cytex and within 30 minutes other patient is ready. And now the transfer of atypical mycobacteria to one patient can happen. And this is poor producing other infection in the large. All over the world it is panic and you know sometimes the wound that creates the weeping of like this. Because patient will come and they will say that I have the discharge. Whenever they go to the shower, they press it, some food comes out. You will do the culture sensitivity test, nothing comes. It will come sterile. And then later it will found that it is atypical mycobacterium. Now you have to give high dose of clarithromycin together with the R4 drug regime of the tuberculosis for 12 months at least, then it gets that. And then also if you recognize late and the intra port site sometimes sinuses form. That will one port will kind of communicate with the other, will communicate with the third. And then you have to do the extensive debridement and surgery to treat. So that's why in the developed country they don't use the these uh, reusable instruments at all. They use the entire set of lab poly kit or other kits. If you will give one lab poly kit, I will tell you, this is the one lab poly kit which Ethicon is making. It is fully sterilized, autoclave, with the um, complete disposable gamma ray radiation. So it is guaranteed. Now once you will pass it 75,000. Once you will open it, this is on your instrument trolley. It has three tiers. One in one, you have the four trocars, one various needle. These are disposable various needles, which I will demonstrate to you. Later, but just because Rasul is most likely here, this is second level. In second level, one seizure, one grasper, one Maryland. And third level, one automatic clips here, loaded, preloaded automatic clips, and this is one another Maryland. So, this is all, all is coming in one pack. And cost is 7500 rupees for one lap poly kit. So, here it is new, and sterilization is guaranteed, and you don't have any problem of any infection or any breach into the sterilization. But the problem is that they, it cannot be, every patient cannot afford. 75 dollars means approximately 120, 1200 dollars. And that much cost everybody cannot, every patient cannot afford. So you have to use the reusable instrument. And if you are using it, then take care of the proper sterilization. Sterilization and cleaning both are separately important. Cleaning is also important, I will show you that and how to clean. Once I will come to the instrument. Now the second instrument which I am discuss, discussing today is the trocar and cannula. This is trocar and this is cannula. Although it is used as a synonym, your consultant will always tell that give me trocar. If you are asking for trocar, give only this. <laughs> trocar means this one. This is cannula. All together both is called as port. This is 10 mm port, this is 5 mm port. And port has two things, what is Chokha and what is Chokha has one eye at the tip. There is one eye, which eye is communicated with the back. Can you see there is one hole in it? This is the eye. This is one eye. This is communicated. This is to give hissing sign. As soon as Chokha enters, the gas has started leaking from there. This is called a hissing sign or hissing sign. This hissing sign is very useful. And uh, trocars are of many types. These are called as pyramidal shaped trocar, this is conical trocar, this is safety trocar, this is <coughs> pyramidal shaped trocar, and there is a blunt trocar. There are different types of trocars are there. 
conical trochoid, it, it has only cone. This is blunt. This is safety. Safety means it has a spring loaded. And these are the different types. But most popularly used trochoid is a pyramidal trap trochoid. Because do you know why? Due to the pyramid like shape, once you go and keep on rotating, it displaces the tissue, rectus, and muscle. It only punctures the peritoneum. A skin, anyway, you are cutting by the knife. So, a skin is cut and peritoneum is punctured. The rest of the layers are only separated. So, that chances of hernia is minimum. And this pardon? Sheath? Rectal sheath is fibers are there. So, it is splitted, but it is you are not cutting with the knife. So, the advantage is that bladed trochar will cut it, but pyramidal will split it. So, you have to hold it like that. Of course, little injury is always there, but compared to bladed trochar very less. Now, you will hold it like that and the head and this is cannula and cannula has a two part one is valve other is shaft this is the shaft of the cannula this is valve of the cannula it is very important open the flap and then your cannula is not opened cannula your valve has to be opened and then yes inside no 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 not, not that that is washer this is at the top this is called washer seal is inside yes no in the valve yes yes inside the valve there is a seal here here yes 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 that one can you see the surrounding Yes, that one exactly. This is a rubber seal. This rubber seal should not be broken. If it is broken, you have to change it. Otherwise, gas will is giving you rubbery sound. See, this is a beautiful sound. If it comes metallic sound, this that means it is broken. So there are two type of seal. One is called as valve seal, another is called as washer. This washer is on the top. This is also replaceable part, which time to time you have to change. This is washer on the top. This is also a type of seal and this is a valve. There are few valves which has a magnetic valve. Magnetic valves, this is called as flap valve, flap valve. This is magnetic valve. Inside there is a magnet. Here, if you will see that, this is magnetic valve. Here it is. And it is attracting the magnet there. Can you see? So, once it will go, it will open and it is closing. This is magnetic valve. Magnetic valves are also present, also useful, but only problem is sometime during cleaning, your nurse can miss the magnetic and magnetic force are not very strong force. So, sometime blood clots or fat get deposited in between the magnet and the seal and then gas keep on leaking. So, it is less popular, people are not using much. Maximum number of the companies, even the stores and all, they make flap valve, which is opening and closing. Now, yes, this that is communicated with the back. And when you are attaching it, you have to hold the trocar, port, trocar and cannula like a pistol. This is the way how to hold the trocar. Head of the trocar should rest over the thinner eminence middle finger should go around the air inlet of cannula and index finger should be pointed towards the sharp end. This is the way head of the trochar should rest over the thinner eminence, middle finger should wrap around the air inlet and index finger should be pointed towards the sharp end. This is the way how to hold the trochar. So, that the pressure over the thinner eminence and middle finger should counter each other. Do you know if you will not keep it like that, then if you will push it, the trocar comes back and with the cannula you are struggling, nothing happens. So, the thinner eminence and middle finger should press each other, this is important and index finger should be half way reaching there. So, that suppose you are putting the like that, if you are going into this sponge suppose and you are going there, it will stop you going invariantly, you should rotate it and then it will stop you half way, you got my point. So, keep it there, do not push it, just keep it there and keep on rotating your hand and automatically it will drill and then it is stopped. So, that inadvertently you will not pierce the trocar into the aorta or vena cava or bubble. Remember, trocar and cannula should always go perpendicular, it should not be pointed towards the anus, it should go perpendicular to the abdominal wall. Do you know why? Because pneumoperitoneum is already maintained now. 
This is already it is there. So you should go perpendicular. This is just to check the sound and at the end suppose you want to remove the gas you can use it. At the end of the surgery. Yes. Then gas will come out. Yes. Now other important thing is that in the old pardon like this yes like the index finger is here and index finger is pointing towards the sharp end middle finger is wrapping the cannula do you know in old books uh, there is one textbook of kathodia kathodia was a very famous surgeon who has written the first textbook of laparoscopy in kathodia textbook what was described that inside you should go like a like a gel technique gel technique means you should go first this way and then you go that way and then again you go this way so a cathodia has described it that the skin is here then you go like that then you go like that then you go like that so the skin opening is here and pedoneum opening is there advantage is as soon as you will take the trocar out all the layer will overlap each other and there will no hernia okay. yes that was very good idea yes. but it has a lot of problem one problem is During making a jet set, you will lacerate a lot of vessels. The chances of subcutaneous hematoma. Other problem is when you retrieve the organ, abdominal wall will ask for some shear. Like if you want to take appendix out, then abdominal wall will try to catch some of the major appendix because it is trying to lock. That my point. And during locking, it will tear some of the fat, and those foreign body in the abdominal wall can create abscess formation. And last problem is there is undue force over your cannula. See here, you know why? Because it is entry and exit point is separate. So there is undue force over your cannula, and forcefully, if you will try to turn the cannula to the other direction, it will be tear. And once the peritoneum is tear, there is a lot of pre-peritoneal sagging, and even the subcutaneous emphysema, surgical emphysema, like. So that's why it is now nowadays it is not recommended. Always, whenever you have to put the trocar and cannula, go perpendicular to the abdominal wall. Wherever, suppose it is here, you go like that. If it is here, you go like that. If it is here, you go like that. And perpendicular to the abdominal wall. As soon as the tip of the trocar is entered, now you can change the direction. So that it is perpendicular. And if it is perpendicular, there is no force. You can move in any direction. There will be absolutely no force on your Movement and see, even I am moving. There is no tear in the peritoneum. So that's why perpendicular you should put the trocar in the and always under mesh. So Now, no, that also perpendicular. Perpendicular. Do you know why we are? Using? There are few questions from your question. There are few questions which is there. There are few art people where they have demonstrated. That Ganesh is not required. We can directly put the trocar, and according to those articles, primary trocar has the less injury than the Ganesh. And if you will see in the camps in the India for sterilization camps, they put the trocar directly. They never use Ganesh. That is called as direct trocar. And there are few articles which are published which say that direct trocar insertion has less injury. Ganesh needle creates more injury. Now it is true. When it is being sharp and pointed, it creates more injury. So far, if you directly without, when it is directly, if you put the trocar, the number of incidents of the injury is less. But it is half true. Next truth, half of the truth which is not discussed in those articles is that majority of the injury by the Ganesh. Goes unnoticed, and none of the injury done by the trocar can be unnoticed. Whereas it is when being sharp and so pointed like this, many a time it punctures the body. Many time it punctures the omental vessel, mesenteric vessels. But because it is needle, so little hematoma forms, it stops. Bowel, even if it is punctured, whereas it is out, and bowel automatically seal. You never know also that it it was there any time. That's why the injury of the is still safe. That's why we are why we are using varus needle. We are using varus needle to prevent the injury of trocar. 
is not it. So, that a space is formed between the bowel and abdominal wall. So, that trochar should not do the injury because trochar injury can never be unnoticed. If you do not want to use various needle then you use Hassan's technique. Hassan's technique is a open technique that is used. Person has a two to four percent, but all these two to four percent will develop into the general so That's why blind preparation surgery. You should not learn. You should not. The people who are doing for years, the people who are very much habituated, let them do. Let them do. You may see some people that they were in university, they always put a diet program. If they are doing, let them do. But we should not. Because it is not under the guideline. Yes, always. Yes, for the primary one. For the primary one also, it must go perpendicular. And this is guarded. Yes, under control. Suppose a little bit you can lift the abdominal wall. Although lifting the abdominal wall in the distended abdominal wall is not easy. But if you can lift it little bit, a little angle you can give. But you will not be able to point it towards the end. You will not be able to do that. And if you will do that, you will go to pre -patron. Because it is now already distant. So always the trocar should go perpendicular. Always trocar should and guard. Guarded by the index. And you should never push the trocar. Let it go by its own, by rotating move. Keep on rotating. And take your time. And it is ill, smoothly. Do you know injury happens due to momentum? And momentum is mass into velocity. Like suppose this is bowel. And if I have a smoothly rotating going, if bowel comes, it will be displaced. Because there is no momentum. But if I am going like that, it will come. So most common cause of injury is abrupt forceful injury. Just like because speed is mass is velocity. Velocity is increased, injury will happen. If you want to explore the bowel, then three port may be required, and minimum two. So, definition of diagnostic laparoscopy is: it is a visual examination and interpretation of the intra-abdominal organ in order to detect any pathology by two ports. If you are using only single port, like telescope only, then it is called as peritoneoscopy. Means you are just seeing the peritoneal cavity. You cannot sweep the bowel away. You cannot lift the tube. You cannot see the posterior wall of ovary. Sometimes even you cannot see the appendix because appendix is hidden by the small bowel. You cannot sweep the bowel away. So, for diagnostic laparoscopy, two ports are required. For operative, at least three. Do you know even in the single incision laparoscopic surgery, incision is one, but port is three. So, three ports are required one for left hand, another for right hand. Now, question is how many? 10 mm and how many 5 mm? At least one should be 10 mm. At least question answer is at least one should be 10 mm. Why? He is saying 2 10 mm for? For tissue retrieval, yes. For tissue. Yes, you are also correct. Do you know if you have a 5 mm telescope, then even the only one 10 mm will do because at the time of tissue retrieval, we will put 5 mm telescope in 5 mm port and 10 mm we will use to retrieve the tissue. But suppose you do not have any 10 mm, then you have to use the 2 10 mm. You do not have 5 mm telescope, then you have to use 2 10 mm. Some people they do the reverse feeding that is not recommended. What is reverse feeding? Suppose this is appendix and they have only one cannula, then what they do? They catch it like that, this way the appendix and then they Suppose this is the telescope, they tell the assistant okay, pull the telescope back and assistant is pulling the telescope and they are pushing the pushing the appendix in like that. You are doing in gall better this, in gall better how come? No, no, umbilical port, umbilical port and seeing from where? Seeing through the? Gradually, with the camera, at the same time, I was going out through the board. And going out, I was through the board. Why? So, your epigastric port is 5 mm? Yeah, 5 mm. All 5 except the. Epigastric, you are using 5 mm port. Okay. If you are using epigastric 5 mm, then you can use. 
but it has one problem. Do you know why? Because the instrument has taken already 5 mm and only 5 mm is left for your effective. So, when you are entering it sometime it can tear, it can tear, it can puncture the gall bladder, a lot of bile can drop inside and because you are not seeing so you are thinking it does not happen. You know why? Because your telescope once you are rail rodding your telescope is seeing into the cannula only and it is not seeing all the bile or all the infected material which has been dropped inside and then when you contaminate you contaminate the port wound also and wound infection is one of the cause and one of the reason is the way how he has done this is one of the reason of that so that's why we should not use it now idea the, the recommendation now is not to use uh, the board as uh, retrieval for the, for the draft should come, come in the pouch yes you should of, uh, yes yes correct. absolutely correct that's the reason americans and even in the whenever you have a doubt even in the developed country developing country you should use endo bag you should use endo bag because even the normal looking gall bladder has a chances of carcinoma and that can be due the port side metastasis and you know port side metastasis is a medical legal negligence if you have port side metastasis our patient can sue us that because it is already published that it is due to not using the endo bag not only that sometime if you will do the dermoid cyst surgery and if you have not used a good quality endo bag then there is a chances of squamous cell carcinoma of the port wound due to the dermoid cyst because those content of the dermoid if you will touch the abdominal wall it can create a problem. So, these are some of the complication which we should must keep in mind and we should avoid. So, now sometime if you have a 10 mm you will like to reduce that to the 5 mm. So, in those situations you have to use reducer otherwise gas will leak. So, suppose this is 10 mm and if I will use 5 mm instrument then gas is leaking because valve is open now. With the valve open I remember one thing that suppose you are doing surgery and if your pneumoperitoneum is lost gas is gas is not retaining into the abdomen and abdomen is deflating you do not have a working space then where you where are the possibility of leak of the gas around the wound, around the wound he is absolutely correct means your size of skin incision is big and it is leaking how you will know subsaline drop you put and you can see the bubbles coming out very good another possibility maybe from the washer itself maybe washer another is valve another is valve this is valve inside seal of the valve. So, how you will know that seal of the valve is leaking or the washer is leaking? <coughs> Pardon? No, changing so all you have to change 8 suppose 4 ports are there and change washer one washer one seal 2, 2 from 4 you will change 8 that will take 80 minutes time changing will take time. Do you know you remove the instrument and after removing the instrument from any port if the gas is leaking after removing the instrument that means valve is defective and if the ga gas is leaking after putting the instrument in that means washer is defective because if the instrument is in then there is no role of valve gas because valve is open anyway. So, at that time gas is protected by washer. So, after instrument insertion if abdomen is deflating that means washer is defective and without instrument if abdomen is deflating uh, once the instrument is not there then washer does not have any role. Now, the gas is protected by the valve. So, after without instrument if abdomen is deflating that means valve is defective. No, not port, just open the valve and change from the other port. Of, of course, you can change entire, but why you will put it out? Just keep it in and remove it and replace from the another. Or do not remove the instrument any time, always keep one instrument inside this. You got my point? Always keep the instrument there, that instrument you do not. And if you have to change the instrument, you may have to put a thumb and then change the instrument. These technical things happens always 
during surgery some of the valve is leaking some of the washer is leaking especially for these reusables because any time any of the ports should be defective so you should be able to identify and then take care of the leak now reducers are two type one is top mounted this is top mounted so that if i want to make 5 mm just i will put and it is done 5 mm another type of reducer is long reducer this is long reducer this is long reducer which you can put in now which one is good top is good top loaded is good okay long is good okay why because when you insert the long one the valve keeps open yes that is true and why it is one it can easily when it can be easily applied both of you are correct but both has its own merit and demerit also demerit of this one is he is correct valve is open so it cannot be introduced alone it has to go with the instrument and come with the instrument like hold it and put one third of instrument in then hold both together and then you go in if you have to come out you cannot take the instrument alone all the gas abdomen will deflate so if you have to take it out take two third out hold both together and bring bring out but this is more useful do you know why it can be used for tissue retrieval it can be used for knotting and suturing suppose you have to retrieve a small tissue out i don't want to make the port out and i don't want to use endo bag then i can use reducer because if i will take the entire port out what will happen abdominal wall will be in the contact suppose this is appendix and i don't want to infect the abdominal wall with this appendix then what is the better i use reducer and hide the appendix in the reducer and then take it out and this is appendix inside and i can exit it so and this is this has never touched anything there was no rail rotting there was no any pulling of the cannula there was no touch of the appendix with the abdominal wall isn't it so it can be used as a tissue retrieval sometime i have to put a needle inside for suturing knotting this cannot be used if i will use top mounted reducer i cannot put a needle needle holder suppose there is a needle holder and i want suturing and if i will hold it like that i cannot go see it will touch it is trapped here it cannot go but if i have a long reducer i can put my needle holder first into the reducer like this then i can catch the suture then i can hide the suture and then i can hold both together and then i can go it will not be trapped by the valve also and then i can perform suturing knotting again at a time of removing the needle i will hide the needle into the reducer and then come out without reducer if i will try to take it by the top mounted top mounted and i am going there and if i am holding the suture and i am trying to take it out see the suture is trapped by the wall and it may break there was one very funny article but interesting that they have lost the needle and for 6 hour with the c arm they have tried to find it out ultimately one resident has seen this was in the cannula <laughs> it was broken yes and they did laparotomy and with a c arm for 6 hour needle needle where needle is gone and needle was in the cannula and cannula c arm also cannot see because it is metal <laughs> so this is a one of the possibility always keep in mind that not using the round reducer long reducer and trying directly taking into the cannula it can break from here and if you will see here it is it is in the valve see it is trapped in the valve here and it is it is it is lost so this is not good always use a long reducer for needle for suturing knotting these are not pushers one darga not pusher clark not pusher so for suturing knotting long reducer but if you have to use only for instrumentation like then use top mounted because long reducer has a you know go with the instrument come with the instrument here it is not bypassing the valve so in spite of being attached gas will not leak because valve is still working and then i can use the instrument 5 mm 
and I can take this 5 mm out again I can use another 5 mm is not it and if I have to use 10 mm I can do like that and I can use 10 mm and it is hanging there waiting for me again for 5 mm I can. So, both has its own importance advantage and disadvantage, but long reducer can if you have you do not need short you can do without, but without long reducer you have a difficulty in suturing knotting or tissue retrieval.